Hey there. I recently made a video showing how to disassemble and reassemble your Apple HomePod to repair a no power issue without affecting its sound or looks. You may have also seen my short video where I replaced the amp I see to fix death farts and no subwoofer volume. I've had a few requests to show exactly how I replace these components on the amplifier board. For this video, we'll jump right into the board. So if you want to see how I get this far, you can check out my other video in the description. There are also different tools and techniques you can probably use to get this done, but here we'll use my cheap hot air station, a soldering iron, some flux, some copper wick, some solder of course, and some 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol to clean things up. First, we'll go over the 60 volt 5 amp shot key barrier diode. When this shorts out, it's usually due to overheating or over voltage, and you'll notice your home pod no longer lights up or responds, but it still pulls somewhere around 5 watts of power from the wall. This diode is located on the amplifier board, right around here. This diode failure is sudden onset and not something that will work intermittently before totally failing. You can test the diode while it's still on the board by putting your multimeter into continuity test mode, where your meter gives you feedback when a short is detected, like this. Then put one lead on one end of the diode, and test both pins on the other end of the diode with your other lead. Usually when it's bad, it will show shorted on both anodes. It's a good idea to test the diode again once you have it off your board to verify the diode itself was your short and not something else on the board shorting your diode. So let's pull it off. When you're working on this diode, be mindful of the small capacitors around it. There's one here and two more right behind it here. If you're using the same station as I am, we'll go ahead and turn it up to the max at 500 degrees Celsius and the airflow at about 90% of the way up. And then we're going to start with our heat a couple inches away just to get the board warmed up a little bit. And then we'll bring it in about an inch away from the diode and heat the diode itself up and pull that off. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to preheat that area. And then we'll get about an inch away from that diode. And then we'll start poking it until we see the solder melt and it lets us move the diode. This may take a few seconds to get the diode hot enough with the board pulling away so much of the heat. All right, then we're going to grab it. You can see it's wanting to move, so we can pull that straight off. We're gonna keep the heat on it as we pull the diode off because we don't want the pads to cool down and rip off as we pull the diode out. So there we go. With your old diode off, let's not forget to test this again to make sure that the diode is in fact our short and not something else on the board. So again, multimeter into continuity mode. And then we'll go ahead and test both of these pins. And our diode is shorted. So we'll go ahead and prepare our board for the new diode. To do that, we'll put some flux down and clean these pads up with some fresh solder. So here's some flux.
we'll get our soldering iron. Now we'll suck all that junk up with our copper wick. When you're using the copper wick, be sure you move the wick with the iron and you don't take the iron off of your wick when you move it around. Otherwise you could end up with uh, your copper strands getting stuck to your pads and then you end up creating more work for yourself. All right, we'll go ahead and clean all this up with some rubbing alcohol. And then again, we'll put some more flux down and put some fresh solder on these pads. And then we'll take our new diode and we'll go ahead and do a similar process. We'll put some flux on here and some solder. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and place our new diode down and line that all up. And we'll reflow that into place with the heat about an inch away. And what we'll do with this is we'll keep gently pressing down on the diode until we see the solder melt around it and the diode sort of settle down. Alright, I don't know if you can see that, but the solder's melted, so we're going to hold it down, take the heat away, and keep holding it down for a few more seconds. And then we can see the solder solidify, and we can go ahead and let go. Now, if you want, you can go around it again with your iron and a super fine tip to touch up the joints here. Then clean everything up again with some rubbing alcohol. Alright, now we can put this back into our HomePod, put a couple screws in before connecting the power supply, the subwoofer, and the logic board to give it a quick test before fully reassembling. So, let's move on to the amplifier I see. This chip is responsible for amplifying the subwoofer signal. When it starts to fail, you may hear loud pops, followed by a restart, no subwoofer volume, or crackling in the bass during playback. There is a similar pop and restart because of a software bug, which was fixed in OS 15.3. You'll know if it's the bug if you're on an older version of OS 15 and you have a panic log in your HomePod's analytics. Without the panic log and with an up-to-date OS, if yours is popping and restarting, 
it's probably this chip. You can also check if your subwoofer speaker is good by feeding it audio from another amplified source. Just be careful with the volume in using the subwoofer speaker in free air. You can visually inspect the chip to see if there's obvious damage. Just know there is the pin 1 identifier mark on the bottom left corner that may trick you into thinking that's damage there. Go ahead and show you what that pin 1 identifier looks like here. You can just barely see it in the bottom left corner right there. Sometimes you might see your chip completely destroyed like this with a hole in it. Here's another one that blew out on both sides. And here's a board where the trace underneath the amplifier IC burned out completely. As of filming, you have two options for parts to replace this chip. The first option is getting the OEM amp IC, or part number 98-0431, from AliExpress for about $5 a pair. It does take a couple weeks for shipping, but mine did show up in about a few weeks, and they seem to be legitimate. I've also found for the second option, the IR4312M has been a suitable replacement, and you can get these from DigiKey or Mouser and many others. Keep in mind, there are similar part numbers in the IR4000 family, but I haven't had a successful attempt with those yet. The only differences seem to be the total power rating, and with the HomePod subwoofer supposedly around 50 watts, the 4312 is sufficient. I'll have links in the description to all these parts. As for actually replacing the amp IC, this one is tricky. Even for a QFN, it seems more challenging than most because of how small the pads are, leaving very little room for error and the lack of room around the chip to touch it up with an iron. It usually takes me a couple of attempts of reheating and realigning the chip before I get it working again. And I've only talked to one other person who had a similar experience, needing to try a few times until it was working again. If you still want to try this, here's how I do it. With our station at 500 degrees Celsius, and again almost max airflow, we'll start by heating up the general area, then we'll bring the air in to about an inch away, and start gently poking the chip until we see it move and we feel comfortable enough to pull it up and out of place. Once you start seeing the chip move under the heat, you'll want to keep your heat on there for an extra few seconds just to make sure that you've got all the solder joints melted, and then you'll want to keep the heat applied to the chip as you pull it off to avoid those joints re-solidifying and you end up damaging or pulling your pads off the board. A good spot to grip this chip in order to pull it off the board without knocking around any other components is about three quarters of the way down, about like so. So we'll go ahead and grab our heat and pull this off. We'll start with heating up the whole area first. and then we'll focus on the chip and start poking it until we see it move. It may take a while to get it hot enough in that solder melted. All right, we can see it starting to move. So we'll go ahead and grab that about three quarters of the way down and lift it straight up while keeping the heat on it to avoid damaging our pads underneath. And we bumped some stuff around there, no big deal. We'll go ahead and put those back into place. There we go. So we'll take our iron with some flux and new solder to clean those pads up first. Good. Then we'll wick all that off and clean it up with some rubbing alcohol. Good. 
get some alcohol here, clean that up. Now we'll get some new solder and flux on there. And finally, just a little more flux before we put our new amp IC chip into place. To line this chip up, let's go ahead and compare with another board here. And if we look, we can see it appears to be vertically centered between these resistors and these caps, but very slightly to the left, closer to these caps on the left than these ones on the right. So we'll go ahead and mimic that. We're going to reflow this into place by bringing the heat right onto it and gently pressing down on the chip until we see the solder melt and the chip settle into place just like we did with the diode. And once we see the chip melt into place the way that we want, we'll keep it held down with our tweezers and again keep it held down as we pull the heat away for a few seconds until we let go of it. All right, when we're happy with how the solder's melted and the chip's placement, we'll hold that down with our tweezers, take the heat away, and keep holding for a few more seconds. All right, and then we can give this a quick clean with some rubbing alcohol, and then throw this together for a quick test to see if our repair was successful or not. Worst case, if you bridged any of the pads, it may short your amp IC and you'll need to replace the chip again. If you didn't line it up just right, or not all your pads made a complete connection, you won't have any subwoofer volume and you'll just need to try again. That's about all I have for this video. I hope you found this helpful and we can bring more HomePods back from the grave. Subscribe and follow me on social media to keep in touch with the latest HomePod repairs, hacks, and more. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.